I want to make a statement to you, and I want you to hear me, please. All sound theology is expressed in the masculine, and all unsound theology is expressed in the feminine. Now, I'm going to expound upon what that means here as time goes on, but the Bible has clearly taught And it's always been there. Some people just, I don't know if you've just never read the Bible or what, but the New Testament church is supposed to be led by a man, a bishop, a pastor. And his gender is clear. He is supposed to be a male. Of course, there's a number of different things that even have to qualify him, even if he is a male. I think, someone asked me a while back, said, you think women shouldn't be preaching? I said, well, not only that, I don't think women should be preaching. I think most men should not be preaching either. And that's just how strict the Bible is on these certain issues. But why should a woman not be preaching? Well, it's because all sound theology is expressed in the masculine. It's all patriarchal. The Bible is a patriarchal book. It gives the gospel from a patriarchal tone. And all heresy today is expressed in a matriarchal tone, a feminine tone, a divine feminine tone. And Beth Moore is demonstrating exactly what I'm talking about in today's video. Don't go away. All right, guys, I'm a YouTuber, so do the things, you know, subscribe and like and all that good stuff right there. I want to I want to share with you a couple of verses, okay? Let's just, uh, I mean, I'm just going to go here to Psalm 7, verse 11. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Now, that is not some contradiction in the Bible. I mean, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, no doubt. We believe that from John 3, 16, and in, you know, Romans 5, there's a God commendeth his love towards us, and while that we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. I think we we all get that. That's just elementary school theology. But the, the, the point still stands. God judges the righteous and is angry with the wicked every day, and he is going to judge sinners. And, in, and really, there's going to come a day where Jesus is going to come to the earth, and he is going to destroy all those who have rejected him. As a matter of fact, I can even show you here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 some really strong language about God talking about those who reject the gospel right here. Um, it says right here, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And then they, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now that seems like from just a, a perspective here that that's pretty strong language, but I want to tell you this. I don't hear women preachers speaking on these subjects. When's the last time you heard Victoria Osteen say anything like that? When's the last time you heard Joyce Meyer say anything like that? When's the last time you heard Priscilla Shire or, uh, I mean, you name, when's, when's the last time Paula White Cain preached on hail? She doesn't. They don't. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because all sound theology is expressed in the masculine and all unsound theology is expressed in the feminine. And, of course, if, I'm going to just throw this out there. If you have never seen our documentary, Third Adam 3, Rise of the Divine Feminine, please take the time, go to our channel, and watch that. That's available now. You guys will understand this thoroughly after you see this documentary. We've got 320,000 views on it right now. This has become our flagship documentary series, the whole series right there, Third Adam 1, 2, 3. And if you want to take the deep dive, the super deep dive in Third Adam 3X, we've got four and a half hours of material there. So I, I'm speaking from a place of good understanding when it comes to these issues. And I I believe I know what I'm talking about here. So I want you to do this. Let's just, let's just look at the Bible together. I want to go to first Timothy chapter two, and I want you to see that this is pretty cut and dry stuff. First Timothy chapter two, let's go to the very end of this. Um, it says right here, uh, let the woman, this is in the context of the local church. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression, notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. And so these two verses right here are very problematic for a lot of uh, people today. 
Uh, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you ladies have no role in the local church. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that, that the expression and the articulation of theology needs to be done by men because all sound theology is expressed in the masculine. All sound theology is expressed in a patriarchal manner. And all unsound theology is expressed in a matriarchal or a feminine manner. And, and it's, very, it's very easy for women to make that mistake. And so basically the Bible's teaching that women should not be preaching because the manner in which they will speak and give truth can oftentimes be done in a feminine manner. I mean, I don't, I don't know why that's controversial. I don't know why evangelicalism can't, can't get this. It says, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but be in silence. That doesn't mean you can't sing. That doesn't mean you can't uh, testify. That doesn't mean you can't share the gospel with people. It doesn't mean that kind of stuff. But it comes, when it comes to the people that are standing up articulating theological truth to the masses, those need to be men. That's plain as Jane right there in your Bible. Now, here's what I want to show you. Beth Moore has proven time and time again that she does not know what she's talking about. And here's the tweet that I want to show you, okay? This, is, this was tweeted out just a couple of days ago, January 14th. This is like three days ago from the recording of this video. She says, for the life of me, I don't get the appeal of Jonathan Edwards to many. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jonathan Edwards was a great man of God, um, and he actually preached uh, sinners in the hands of an angry God, and, and he, he was one of the men that was given a lot of the credit for uh, the creation of the Great Awakening. Of course, here's some just some information on you, uh, 1703 to 1758. He's actually buried, I uh, believe, up in Massachusetts, uh, right next to David Brainerd, and a godly man, man of God, I believe he's an old Anglican preacher years ago, but he preached a sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, and a uh, marvelous piece of American literature. If you want to go check that out, please take the time to do so. You will be, uh, you will be, um, you, like, you'll love it. It's going to be interesting reading for you. One of the great sermons in American history, but in, in the sermon, he gives a lot of really graphic descriptions of God's anger towards sinners and God's offense towards sinners and how you've offended God greatly and you have you have angered God and invoked his wrath and at the very end of the sermon of course he turns on his head and, and gives the plea to come to Christ and and receive the gospel and and people people reacted so well to that but that's the problem with, with today's preaching is that everybody's preaching all these mamby pamby uh, wimpy gospel messages where you know you're you're not a you're not a wicked sinner who deserves hell you're you're just a a, a misguided soul who's made a few mistakes along your journey. That's that is a feminine expression of theology and it's not sound. Instead of being a hell deserving sinner who has offended God and you're going to die and go to hell if you do not repent and come to Christ. I mean, which is a masculine expression of the gospel. These people today are preaching this. Well, you're just, you, you just, you, you're a victim and society's been rough on. Won't you come to Jesus? He's just a big squeezy pillow that you can come and squeeze him. And you just, you can just have this big squeezy Jesus pillow the rest of your life. And your life will be so much more comfortable if you have this big Jesus squeezy pillow with you all the, all along the journey. That's a feminine expression of the gospel and it's not sound. It's not sound. So this great man of God, this Jonathan Edwards, Beth Moore is sitting there just absolutely just, <laughs> I mean, what is wrong with you, you psychotic woman? For the life of me, I don't get the appeal of, of Jonathan Edwards to me. That's like saying, for the life of me, I don't understand why anybody would read Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Whoa. That's the equivalent of what she's saying here. I just don't understand how anybody would say that. And and she goes on and she and 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 her writing style is actually quite. I, I, she's like she's got a silly writing style. Um, she tries to be funny, and I, I think to some degree she, Beth is funny. Uh, but here's a part of the book that she quotes: "The God that holds you over the pit of hell, much as one holds a spider or loathsome insect over the fire, abhors you and is dreadfully provoked. You are ten thousand times more abominable in His eyes than the most hateful, venomous serpent is in ours." And that's an excerpt from the sermon, and it's it's powerful stuff because I think if people are going to understand <coughs> their need for a savior, they're going to have to understand why they need one. And, and, the, and the overarching point is you need a Savior because you're in big trouble. 
And most people today are not hearing that from pulpits is because America is, 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 is plagued with pulpits that are articulating theology in the matriarchal perspective from a matriarchal perspective and in a feminine tone. And that's why we have so many heretics today. We have heretics today because all unsound theology is expressed in the, in the matriarchal and the feminine. And Jonathan Edwards is expressing it in the masculine. So listen to what she says here. <clears throat> she said, I get that Edwards is talking to those who do not look to Christ for salvation, but I'm just saying I was so broken and self-loathing and ensnared in my sins. Such preaching would have made me feel like dying, like running away, not running towards God. I would have wondered how he could go straight to loving someone like a son after he had abhorred them like a spider. Like, guys, this, this, that statement right there, I, I'm I'm sorry, but this whole sentence right here pr- gives a pretty good evidence that Beth Moore does not understand the gospel. It's frightening. I would have wondered how he could go straight to loving someone like a son after that he had abhorred them like a spider. That is the miracle of the gospel. You were the enemy of God, and then you received Christ, and now you're a son of God. Hallelujah. What's wrong with that? But Beth is actually attacking that concept, which is to be to put it mildly is extremely problematic. Wow. Go home, Beth Moore. She even says this, this thought process break breaks down, of course, because it's certainly not like God, certainly not God because I'm certainly not God to be candid. I tend to like spiders. I mean, real ones like granddad, Daddy long leads and riding spider, Charlotte and all. Anyway, I was such a messed up kid, such so much shame. I could not stop making terrible decisions, such an unstable boundaryless home. I think we can all say that. I mean, you know, I, I can identify with that. What drew me to God was merciful, beautiful Jesus. Yes, Jesus who could warn the who could warn the ever living fire out of you, but Jesus who could tell you everything. Um, everything you'd done yet somehow in doing so be all a light with such holy love towards you that his confrontation gives you dignity. You need to feel like maybe in him and his eyes, you're worth saving. That's problematic right there because really I, we're, none of us are worth saving. The only worth is in Jesus. Jesus was the only thing that had value. I don't have value. Spencer Smith is nothing. I, I wasn't worth saving Christ is the one who has all the worth and I received him. And so his worth is transferred to me. I'm, I'm nothing and you're nothing, but see this, this, this is, this is why, this is why the Bible said what it said. I suffer not a woman to teach nor do you serve authority of the man, but be in silence because when we start expressing theology in the feminine, like is right here, Guys, it all goes to pieces real quick. And you run into town and tell everyone you can find, come and meet who I've met. And she even says this. She says, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm no big theologian. Now, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that one. I'm no big theologian. You shouldn't be a theologian, Beth. You shouldn't. But I just don't think you're a spider, and I don't think God abhors you. There's a number of different things wrong with this. Now, here in Romans 5, 6, we find the verse that for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the gospel. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. That is the gospel. But here's the thing. The, the gospel that Beth Moore preaches is all love and none of the negative stuff. For example, the I was an enemy of God for when we were enemies, okay? We were also sinners. We were wicked sinners and enemies of God. And it even says here that we were ungodly. So listen, you cannot say the gospel 
uh, that you're an ungodly sinner and that you're an enemy of God. You cannot speak that in the feminine matriarchal tone. You, you, you have limited what the Bible says. And now when you speak theology in a matriarchal tone, you cannot speak the whole counsel of God. Okay, look, I understand we've all gone astray. All of us like sheep have gone astray. But listen, we cannot risk, risk preaching a gospel that is all love and no judgment. That's the point of all this. A gospel that's all love and no judgment is not a gospel at all. Quite frankly, I'll tell you this, uh, 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 I would say a gospel that's all heaven and no sanctification is really not a gospel at all either, and that may be for another video. But what Beth is saying here, and here's the, here's the point that I have made, and I, I want to express to everybody, all unsound theology, and I even, I even posted this on Twitter myself, all unsound theology is expressed in a matriarchal manner. Sound doctrine is always expressed in a patriarchal manner. Unsound doctrine is always expressed in a matriarchal manner. 1 Timothy 2.12, but I suffer not a woman to teach. It's done well. But listen, I believe I want to explore this topic further and, uh, and try, to, try to just give some good information on this because I think this is very important stuff. And we'll, we'll dig into this as time goes on. But listen, sec, this is not a secondary issue. This is a, this is a very serious thing. God has not called women to be the mouthpieces and the articulators of truth in the church age. God has called bishops, qualified bishop men, to do that. Now, that doesn't mean that women can't do stuff. I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of information even here on my iPad. There's a lot you women have to do in the church, and there, there's plenty for you to do. Trust me. But the pastor and the preaching needs to be done in the masculine. It has to be. If not... We're going we're gonna to eventually devolve into heresy, and I think that's what's going on. I'll even show you this, Church of Thyatira, Revelation chapter 2. They were, good, they were good people doing good stuff. I mean, they had faith, patience, and works, but they, they let the woman stand up and teach, and her name was Jezebel. They suffered that woman Jezebel who calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things, sacrifice to idols. That's the progression. It, they... When it's expressed in a matriarchal tone, it gets away from holiness and it gets away from separation. Listen, all, and I'm going to give you this, all of the modern worship scene, when you have songs like A Sloppy Wet Kiss and basically get a bunch of effeminate wigglies getting up and saying things along the lines of, give me smoochies, daddy God, give me smoochy smoochies. It sounds like a Hallmark movie. It, all of it, every bit of it is geared that way. It's all feminine worship. And I think most of these churches today are designed to cater to women. And it's not sound theology. It's no, it's no wonder. It's no wonder we have the heretics ever, just coming out of our ears like we do today. It's because the theology that's being expressed today is being expressed in the feminine. Go watch 3rd Adam 3. It'll change your life. I promise you that. I promise you that. And we'll explore this topic even further. I think Beth Moore needs to stop. She's making it worse on herself. She's confusing your wives and you women. Quite frankly, I think if you're a man and you're watching this video and, you're, and there's a Beth Moore book in your home, you need to go take it and just throw it away. Don't even ask. Just do it get it out of your house. I would say the same for Lisa Tierkirst, and I would say the same for Priscilla Shire and Joyce Myers as well. Get it out because it's dangerous. God bless you, friend.